Karen Tully, continuing to report from the Republican Women of Baltimore County new members meeting. And we have Maggie Dominowski with us, who is running for the Board of Education. Maggie, this is an issue and a position that's close to not only my heart, but many of the parents' heart today, because they're seeing what is happening in our schools, which we'll get to in a minute. But I think first, it's important to understand what exactly is this position and why is it important? The Board of Education members sit on the board to represent students, parents, and communities. They're there to make um, their votes and their vo opinions known on how they want their schools to be run. They're supposed to listen to their stakeholders, which are the students, parents, and communities. And the reason I'm running is because they weren't listening to us in the last three years. What exactly happened? What's the heart of the member matter? Did you go to school one day or did your children come home? I know Jordana, who was running for lieutenant governor, actually um, heard things that were going on in the school and was appalled. What happened to you? For me, I had, at the time of COVID shutting down, I had a first grader. We were just starting the process of an IEP, which is an individualized learning, um, individual educational learning process or uh, plan. And I, it took us what would have, should have taken a couple months to get it situated. It took two years for him. And in that time, he became two years behind in learning. We tried to apply for a uh, private school because we were afraid he wasn't going to get the in-person learning that he needed. And the teachers told us that he wasn't, he, he was two years behind in reading and that he would not be able to be a, a third grader at the time with those students. And I, I I don't think, I sat home with him every day. I had, I sat there, I made sure he did his, his schoolwork. I made sure we, we, co we contacted with the teachers. We did everything we were asked to do. We went through all the testing and he was still that far behind. And it, it, it should not happen. Not all parents can do that. And I want to fight for all of those. Students. So why shouldn't it have happened? Should the board have been more aware of these particular issues? The board should have given their teachers and their schools more guidance. The reason it took so long is because they didn't know what to do. They weren't being told by the board how to proceed with these individualized education plans. They weren't allowed to see us in person. They were doing everything on virtually, but you, a lot of those tests you could not do virtually. Now, some of this has to do with COVID, but I'm sure you have uh, discovered many other problems in the um with the with the education system what are some of the other major problems that you were you think we're facing today with our children right now i just i don't want to see another mandate i don't want to see another mask on a child i don't want to see inappropriate um education for our children i don't want to see I want our children to learn the things they need to learn to go out in the world and whether it's get a job or go to college, they need to have those basic skills, how to read, how to write, know our history, know, our, know, our, know how to do math, basic math. Maggie, let me ask you something. Do you think we are really seeing some of these woke things in some of, these, in some of the schools and they're pushing the transgender issues and the critical race issues? Do you really believe that? What I have seen in our personal, in my school, it's very mild, but I can see it coming and I don't want it to come. I want our children, and I've, I've seen that there's less emphasis of getting our children back up to a current grade level of reading, math, and science, and more of a, you know, let's worry about these other social acceptance things. Our kids don't need to solve, solve the social problems right now. They need to know how to read and write before they can do any of that. Well, I, I say a couple things. One, one woman got prayer out of school, Madeline Murray. She fought and she did it. If women can join, if one woman can get the prayer out of schools, if we can join together as parents and mothers and get the right people in the right positions, such as you on the Board of Education, we can fight this and, and we can win. Now, I did want to say one other thing. This is a slow chipping away of society. You mentioned it's not that bad in your school, but I've talked to other people and they said that it's major and they're seeing it. I mean, they didn't wake up overnight and a Nazi, the Germans were there. This happened at little pieces at time, so I think it's important we band together. I absolutely agree with, with you in that. It wasn't a slow process and some schools are, are further ahead than ours. 
and it's not going to be a slow process to reverse it either. But if we don't get the right people involved now to step up now, it's it's going to get even harder. I have one other uh, question. Do you believe a lot of the people on the board are very liberal? I don't know if it's that they're liberal or if it's that they have an agenda that I just that doesn't involve putting our kids first and that's the only thing I have going for me no one is I'm not endorsed by no one's telling me what to say I'm not endorsed by TABCO or a teachers union I don't have an agenda at all except to get the best education for our kids whatever that takes well I can sense with you that you have a good heart Thank you. I, I can tell that and that you really want to um, do what's best for our children so some final words don't give up on the public school system. There's people like me everywhere that want to do the best for all of our kids. And just... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to interrupt you. One other thing. Yes. I should have let you finish. That's okay. But my, my cameraman's over there telling me that I forgot one thing. And my cameraman's my husband. <laughs> yeah, um, listen to him. Yes. Um, what districts? Tell me, are the schools. We had talked about yes, that before. Yes. And you said that's very, very important. Yes. So that people know because there's so many interviews. I want them to hone right in yes. on Maggie and to know what schools you'll be representing. So the school I, the schools I will be representing are in District 3. Um, the high schools there are Hereford High School, Delaney High School, and Lock Raven, and all the middle and elementary schools that feed into there. Some other candidates that believe the same way I do are... Um, Corey Coons, uh, there's, he's in District 1, and there's, oh no, um, I'm sorry. Don't worry with District Okay, so Cor there's Corey Coons, there's Julie Henn, and there's Rebecca Chesner. These are all candidates that want to get our school systems back to teaching education to our kids again. Okay, is there anywhere they can go and read about you, or go on your Facebook page and read what you believe in, or what you're doing, or how can they help you? Yes, um, I, my website is electmaggieletsdominowski.com. Honestly, if you just type in Maggie Letts Dominowski, it, it's one of the first okay. things that... You need to spell that. Okay. Maggie... Sorry. M spell it, please. Okay. It's Maggie, M-A-G-G-I-E, Litz, L-I-T-Z, Dominowski, D-O-M-A-N-O-W-S-K-I. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Is there any other final words that you would like to say? I just want to say that I want to represent all the parents, all the students, all the communities, and make our public education back to what it used to be when we were growing up. Oh, oh when we were growing up. <laughs> well, God bless you. God bless America. And God bless our children in the United States of America.